Anastasi Andreevich Vonshotsky Russian, Anastasij Andreevich Vonsaki Polish, Anastasi Wysotsky, June 12, 1898 to February 5, 1965, better known in the United States as Anastas Andreevich Vonsiatsky, was a Russian anti-Bolshevik émigré and fascist leader based in the United States from the 1920s. He became a naturalized American citizen while leading a splinter far-right organization, the Russian National Revolutionary Labor and Workers' Peasant Party of Fascists. The headquarters of the RFO were based in Putnam, Connecticut. Von Schotsky was charged with the support of secret contacts with agents of Nazi Germany and arrested by the FBI in 1942, following the United States' entry into war with Germany and Japan. Released early from prison in 1946, von Schotsky lived out the remainder of his life in the United States. He died in St. Petersburg, Florida, in 1965. Early life Anastasi Andreevich von Schotsky was born in Warsaw, Poland then part of the Russian Empire. His family, though Polish in origin, was known for its long devotion to the Russian Tsars. One of Vonshotsky's paternal great grandfather had been handed a titled estate from the Romanovs. His father, Andrei Nikolaevich, was an army officer assassinated at a radom office of the Imperial Gendarmes by a Polish revolutionary in 1910. His mother was Nina Anastasievna Plyachevskaya. Vonshotsky was educated at a military prep school in Moscow and the Emperor Nicholas II Cavalry Academy in St. Petersburg, Russia. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Military career. Vonshotsky embarked upon a military career in the Imperial Russian Army during the reign of Nicholas II. After the revolutionary events of October 1917, which brought the Leninist Bolsheviks to power and climaxed in the protracted Russian Civil War of 1917–1923, Vonshotsky, newly admitted to St. Petersburg as a military cadet, took part in the anti-Bolshevik opposition and served in the counter-revolutionary white movement, first seeing action against the Red Army at Rostov. Leaving the White Army's stronghold in the Crimean Peninsula with the departing forces of General Wrangel, he was evacuated to Western Europe in 1920. Traveling through Constantinople and France, von Schotsky arrived in the United States in 1922. In March 1930, von Schotsky was given an American Reserve Officers Commission and appointed a first lieutenant of the United States Army Reserve. The military commission would eventually expire in 1935. Political activity Forming political connections within the émigré circles after establishing himself outside Russia, von Schotsky was, at one point in the interwar period, a leader of the Russian fascist organization, an initially independent movement that later became closely associated with the Manchuria-based Russian Fascist Party Von Schotsky split from the RFP in 1933. On March 10, 1933, he founded the Russian National Revolutionary Labor and Workers' Peasant Party of Fascists also referred to as the All-Russian National Revolutionary Party, or the All-Russian National Revolution Toilers and Worker Peasants Fascist Party VRO, another anti-Soviet and anti-communist organization. The headquarters were established at the Vonshotsky Estate in Connecticut and published a newspaper called Fascist, despite earlier publications supplemented by photographs of German soldiers beneath such titles as The Army of the Holy Swastika and continuing collaboration with the German-American Bund elements during World War II. In public appeals amid the growing anti-German sentiment of the early 1940s, von Schotsky's addresses to his target audience struck a different tone. Among other statements, von Schotsky wrote, Fascisms are different. The German, Italian, and Russian fascisms are different in many respects. The Russian Fascist Party is just a united movement of Russians against communism, and fascism is the only political society on the earth at the present time that can wipe out communism. Force is the only thing that can knock it down. In 1934, von Schotsky's organization merged with the Russian Fascist Party, another fascist political organization led by Konstantin Rodzaevsky and headquartered in Tokyo, Japan. However, they soon parted ways. In summer 1940, von Schotsky's publications declared the following 
The Russian National Revolutionary Party, of which I am the leader, does not support either Germany's or Japan's ambition for hegemony in Europe or the Far East. The Germans and the Japanese have never made clear their attitude toward a replacement of the present Stalinist rule by a Russian national government. The sole aim of our organization is to return Russia to a free people with a government elected by the people, of the people and for the people. Our intention is to form in Russia a truly democratic government. Our party is not anti-Semitic. Our party has no membership dues, it is financed solely by voluntary contributions from its members and sympathizers. It is not subsidized by any foreign power or foreign individuals. Our organization is banned in Germany and Japan. Only in the United States can we enjoy freedom of action and thought within the laws of the country. I herewith state emphatically that the activities of our organization are against the present Soviet government alone and that in no way whatsoever does it ACT against the Constitution of the United States or violate its laws which we loyally support. ANASTASEAVONSIATSKY. Thompson, Khan. July 4, 1940. Von Schotsky became a subject of FBI investigation and was indicted in 1942 for connections with proxies for German interests, including key participants in the pro-Nazi German-American Bund, whose leader, Fritz Kuhn, had previously been assisted by Von Schotsky's bail money in 1939. Among other contacts was the American Hitler admirer and anti-Semite William Dudley Pelly was also found. Indicted for conspiring to assist Hitler's Germany in violation of the Espionage Act alongside fellow conspirators Wilhelm Kuhns, Dr. Otto Willumate, Dr. Wolfgang Ebel, and Rev. Kurt E. B. Molzen, von Schotsky submitted a guilty plea after first protestations of innocence, and was convicted under the 1917 Espionage Act by a jury chaired by Thomas J. Dodd in Hartford, Connecticut on June 22, 1942. He was jailed at the United States Medical Center for Federal Prisoners in Springfield, Missouri. Despite the official prison sentence of five years and a fine of $5,000, he was released on February 26, 1946, his sentence effectively having been cut short to the three and a half years in prison already served. After his release from prison, von Schotsky moved to St. Petersburg, Florida, where he wrote articles in Russian newspapers and journals. He authored a book entitled Rasplata Retribution about World War II, where he accused the Japanese government, Franklin D. Roosevelt, and his personal nemesis, Thomas J. Dodd, of hampering the anti-Soviet cause. Meanwhile, von Schotsky dedicated the Tsar Nicholas II Museum in St. Petersburg, Florida. <laughs> personal life Von Schotsky was married twice. He first married Lyuba Murmosky in Ukraine in the 1920s. On February 4, 1922, Von Schotsky married Marion Buckingham Rehm, the daughter of businessman Norman B. Rehm, and a multi millionaire heiress by the time they married. He became a naturalized citizen of the United States in the Superior Court of Wyndham County, Putnam, Connecticut, on September 30, 1927, after his second wife appealed to Secretary of State Charles Evans Hughes. Accused of bigamy by his first wife, the U.S. federal government and the Russian Orthodox Church declared his first marriage to be void. The Von Schotskys resided at Quinatisit Farm in Putnam, Connecticut. Von Schotsky separated from Rehm and started a romantic relationship with Edith Priscilla Royster in 1948. By July 1950, Von Schotsky and Royster had a son together, Andre Anastas Vonziotsky. However, Rehm continued to take care of Von Schotsky and his son financially. Death and legacy Von Schotsky died of coronary thrombosis on February 5, 1965, in St. Petersburg, Florida at Mound Park Hospital, at 66. His body was interred at West Thompson Cemetery in Thompson, Connecticut. Many of the documents of Von Schotsky were stored in the archives of the Hoover Institution in California, in the collection of Professor John Stefan, author of The Russian Fascists, Tragedy and Farce in Exile, 1925-1945, and Providence College, Phillips Memorial Library. <laughs> 